What is up guys and welcome back to another build. In this video we are going to be building an awesome compact MITX build and we have the Resin 5 5600 X combined with the MITX Biostar Racing B550T Silver. To cool it we have the up here which consists of either one or two 120mm fans and we are going to be combining it with the ASUS KO RTX 3060Ti OC Edition. To power all this we will be using the Silverstone Viva 750. You always want to be more than less. For the RAM we will be using Glowway RGB white RAM stick 16 gigabytes 3600 megahertz 8GB times 2. We will also be installing a 1TB Samsung 850 Evo and run Windows off a Samsung 256 gigabyte NVMe M2 drive. For all your backup for movies etc we will be using a Hitachi HGST 7200 RPM spin speed and SATA 3 connection port. All that in this beautiful NZXT Mini ITX build. Let's jump into this build and I'll show you guys just how cool this build is gonna look. I have already installed the Wi-Fi card. If you want to see a quick video on how you install the Wi-Fi card right there, I'll leave a link in the top right hand corner right now. Be sure to check out that link and you will see how I installed the M2 Wi-Fi card for this build. Here we have the AMD Resident 5 5600X. Lift this up. Usually you line up this little gold triangle with the one here. You'll see it when you zoom in. You match these notches. You see how there's four little green parts there? Simply line it up and let gravity do its work and simply close it and that's it. Next, open up all our RAM tabs. The RAM we're using. Very nice RAM actually. Always match the notch. We push it in, ensure that it clicks up. That means the tab has flipped back over and secured the RAM in. One, two, you hear those clicks? That's what you want. Now for our M2 SSD. Move these two little screws here. You're going to need a mini precision screwdriver. These are very small. The Samsung 256 gigabyte. Install on an angle like so. And then press down. In this case, you won't need to use a retaining screw because this holds it down like so. However, make sure you just peel this off. If you've ever touched an M2 drive, it gets very, very hot. Make sure you have the screws in the right way because one screw is longer than the other. And now both screws are flush. We can now install our CPU cooler. It comes in both black and white. So remove these four screws, lift, remove, lift, and remove. Our mounting screws will go through here. Two, Three, four. Just check to make sure that they come in straight. Looking at it, AM4 is the outest one. That's where you would install them. As you can see here, I have used the outer ones. We peel off this. If you install it just right, it will be flush with this mount. Line it up. There we go. Got our base installed. We now install this onto here. This will sit over like this. These four stands will come in and push these down like this and it just helps to hold it up. There we go, just right, perfect. Ensure it's not touching any part. Put that in, we can now install our mounting screws. Put them on, screw them on, that's it. And that secures this bracket to the motherboard so you can get ready to install your cooler. When you install this cooler, what you do, install it using the two screws that they supply here and that simply screws into these two holes here so you simply peel this off like so you do have to remove this push out and lift up and that just comes off like so same with the other side 
with the fan in the way, you cannot get to these two screw holes. So that's why you have to remove the fan first. Add our thermal paste, nice dollop in the center, not too much, just enough. Ensure your logo is right way up. Line up your screw holes, tighten. Just till it's nice and snug. There will be a point where it stops turning. Perfect. Look at the uh, rotation of your fan. We know that it rotates this way and it blows air that way. Now you see this gap in between your fin? Right there. Run this through there, like so. And then plug it back in. Just like this, okay? That's the way it goes on. See how it's thickening up a little bit here? Take it off, line up your fan so it's flush, and then simply reinstall. Perfectly uh, lined up here, that's what you want. Just right. Plug in our fan, CPU fan, goes into this one here, and the cables we will hide accordingly. Look at that, 120 millimeters, and it almost covers the entire MITX motherboard. With that complete, what we do now is we can either install another one on this side or we can just leave it like that, have it the exact same way. You go through, like so, and then so you line it up and clip it down. That's it. Do the same to the other side, put it in, simply click over, and that's it. Look at that. How easy was that? We have it the exact same rotation, so we can see the rotation is right because we want it to blow air out this way. We can now install it into the PC case. Bring the cables together, like so. Bring it all the way around, wrap it, and then you're only left with this much left. We'll leave it like this for now. The MITX NVXT 210i. Really a superb little cute case. Look how compact that is and it even looks really really nice let me give you an idea of just how small this case is 340 millimeters 210 millimeters 370 millimeters what i love about mzxt is they they really go for that minimalist look unscrew this screw here there we go pull on this here and it comes out you have these ball tabs here they simply push in and clip so you need to pull back a little and then Lift it on out because it has those slide tabs there. Let's set this aside. Let's grab out our kit. It has its Type C here and one USB 3.0. Now we have these two screws here. Undo. Don't undo them all the way, just enough so that it comes out. And then you can simply push and slide out. You need to slide it out because you have these three tabs here. Pretty sure this will just pop right off and just pull. This is the bottom, you have a removable dust filter. You also have another removable dust filter here, tabs here and here, and you just release it like so. Then you install your fans here. Because you have a dust filter here, your fans will have to be installed on the inside of the case, on this side. Sometimes it's worth doing this test so you know for a fact that it will work. As you can see here, we've got four screws here. Right, this is gonna remove this modular mounting bracket. Watch this, look at that, perfect. You install your fans on this, and then you reinstall it. Unscrew this here, lift, slide out. You can install two SSDs right there. For a very, very compact build, this has more than enough room to install SSD hard drives. And for your 3.5 inch drive, Installs right here at the bottom and your mounting screws go in at the bottom right there. And that is our finished product with all our cables right here. All nicely wrapped around and hidden. Grab your IO shield. Always writing right way up. Type C. See? Okay, now we just simply push it in, install it. Ensure your screws are in, line it up just right. It should fit perfectly in guys. Now we can install our screws. Make sure your CPU cooler doesn't come past this point or else it's going to be too high and you won't be able to get your glass panel back in. Okay, that's four screws total, that's it. Notice how easy it is now 
Notice how we installed the fan first and then it was much easier to get everything in now. Imagine trying to do all this while it was already installed. You'd have a hard time routing the cables and all that. So keep that in mind when you're doing it. That's how you take that off and install your SSD. It just clips over the top like that. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Now if you're not using it, you can always take it off, but I'll leave it on there for that cool little NZXT logo right there. Put back our RAM, seeing as we have it in there. So look at that, there really isn't much room to wrap your cables after you've done this thing. We're gonna have to tuck them in through here, get them out the other side, like so. One, two, three, and we're missing one more. Back, seeing as we're only using one SSD here. So we have our USB 3.1 connector here. It's even got a um, allocated spot for it. Look at this. So we'll plug in our USB 3.2. Our front panel cable is on this side, to the side here because that's where it's going to plug in. Plug it in so it doesn't keep falling back. We have uh, HDD, LED and power switch. Okay, so we've got power switch up here. HDD on the bottom. Okay, with that plugged in, we can tuck it in there. USB 2.0 and our audio. Got that in. It's in now. And our USB. Look at that. Okay, tuck it in there. Perfect. That yeah, we're going to our sorry, SSD. We're going to install our 3.5 inch hard drive. Actually, before we do that, let's install our power source. That way we have all this room for the cables. So let's grab our power source first. Seven hundred and fifty watts. It's a bronze, so not too bad. In case you just want to use a small power source, you see how there's a bracket here. If you use a small power source, you can remove this and then install it onto that first. But if you're not and you're just going to use a normal ATX power source, then you can simply remove this little bracket like so and install your ATX power source. So I do have one, but it's for a different build. For instance, here is a SFX power source, right? Look at the sheer size difference, okay? If you were using this power source, see how small it is? That would mount perfectly like so. And then you would just simply push this in like so, and then mount it accordingly. But we are not going to be using, I just wanted to show you guys. We will be using a normal ATX. Remove this, install a normal size power source in it, like so. And do up your screws accordingly. I always start off with a couple of screws just to hold it in first. So let's put one in here just to hold it. All right, another one in the other top right hand corner, push it on up, screws line up, okay we just got it in just enough, snug, okay. now we get the last one in, as you can see, Put the last one in. Now we will tighten in a cross pattern, which is what you're supposed to do. Perfect. It ain't going nowhere. Look at that. Perfect. And when it gets rid of all that dust, you just take this off and clean it. With that power source installed, 
Let's do a little bit of cable management so we pretty much know where everything is going to go and the cables that we're going to use. What we don't use, we simply fold and tuck back in. So we'll plug this in after we're done with the cable management. So we know we're going to be using no Molexes in this case, or we could, but as far as I'm concerned, no, not yet. So the Molexes can simply be tucked away like so but we will put a zip tie around it to keep it nice and together. There we go, and we just tuck it on in like so. Perfect, now, here is one SATA cable. We will need this, it has three. So one will go into here, one will go into this, so this looks like the perfect one to plug in this way and then the extra cable here can plug into this like so that takes care of that tuck that in in case we need to mount another one we have this ready for that that's what I like to do. So even though you're not using another one yet, you always have it prepared so you can always mount another one. Saves you from having to pull the cable out later. We need our ATX. Come in through here. Just like that. We have another graphics card cable that we won't be using because the 3060 Ti in this case only uses one. So we'll also get another zip tie around this. Tie it off. And tuck it away. There we go, just like that. Here is the other SATA cable which we will use for the 3.5 inch hard drive that goes right here. And then we plug in, just like that. It's pretty much our cable management. There we go. Okay, that fits in really well. Perfect. Put a zip tie around this to keep that down. Now we can wrap this all the way around. I'll show you where the graphics card cable goes. As you can see right here, this is where the graphics card cable comes. Okay, there we go. Perfect graphics card cable ready to plug in any slack that you have just get rid of it the last set of cable for our 3.5 inch drive bunch it together we won't tighten it too tight until we get our 3.5 inch drive in first grab our 3.5 inch drive like so make sure your ports are on this side that way you can just plug it straight in line it up Basically just putting the screws in to hold the 3.5 inch drive. Perfect, all plugged in. Just a little bit of cable management real quick. Perfect. Okay, let's plug in that SATA. There's our ATX, let's pull that through. Plug in our ATX first, get that out the way. So here is a up here hub has a button to control the colors and it also has motherboard sync as well and it's set up for your power this is designed for up here fans so it works 100% right here our SATA cable will plug in here perfect and our motherboard, in case we want to sync it, we'll plug into there. And our fan can plug here to be controlled. The motherboard sync cable comes through there. Okay, so to make this easier, there is no room at all for me to get my hand in there. So I have to remove this fan just so I can uh, plug everything in easily.
Okay, fan removed. Let's push it to the side now. And uh, let's see if we have some room now to uh, plug all this stuff in, okay? Okay, now we have our fan out of the way. We'll take the fan cable for this hub and plug it into our CPU. Not the CPU option, we'll plug it into the CPU so the temperature will run off the CPU. Okay, we've got our CPU fan in. I'm just going to lock in our cable management. Put a screw that goes in at the top here and at the bottom, same spot. One here. This can be removed to adjust your cables. Our fan can go back in now. Let's give it a test run before you go any further to make sure everything works as it should. Put in our trial graphics card. Give this a quick try, make sure everything works. Everything lights up as it should. Right, now with the quick test run done, I want to reinstall all the fan screws first. Top and bottom. Right, can now install our front fans. I'm going to use these because why not? Why not go one size bigger, which is 140 millimeters? Because it can fit. So here's your 120 millimeter bracket, and on the outside here is 440. So we're going to install these ones. As always, check for direction of flow. It's usually always towards this bracket. Let's just screw it down. One. Two. Screw down the others. Then we just have to route the fan cables and we are done. So as you can see, all I've done here is simply installed the fans and then I just pushed it back in and lined it up, made sure all these holes here are exposed so you can reinstall your front cover and tighten it down by hand. That's it. I routed the cables through the holes here. You can see the cables just coming through barely. So that's a good place to install it. Bunch of all these cables.
tidy up a little bit. Now let's just see if we can get this case on, okay? Put them in. Perfect. This side. Ah, oh, look at that. See how it doesn't bulge out? And the bottom as well. See how it doesn't bulge out? It's really good. I guess we can give it another test run quickly, guys. And uh, if all goes well, we can reassemble this case, put the graphics card in, we are done. So quickly, once again, let's put this power cable in. Turn it on. Okay, so just before we get installing the graphics card, before I stated how there would be a way which I could use the USB 3.2 plug here. So this has a USB 3.1 header. What I plan to do is simply this. Unplug it and use something like this. What I'll do is split one side into a 3.2 like so and then and this here will plug into this and that's it let's just test it after we finish and see if it works one it only goes in one way there we go all right so now we've got that connected let's uh, give it a quick test run and see that it actually works plug it in on this side now there we go just for the sake of the test, I'm going to use another testing graphics card. So, nice and small. Let's see if we can get this to work now. Just turn it on. Perfect. Keyboard seems to be turned on. Oh, and look at that. The USB 3.0 works. Perfect. Now, let's see if the Type-C port works. So here I've got a, a Type-C connection to plug it in. Oh, and it seems to come to life. We'll now grab the USB out of this and plug it into here and see if it works. Look at that. Keyboard still works? Yes, it does. It works. Look at that. Let's see if both work at the same time. And yes, it works. Oh my gosh. I can't believe it. That's awesome. So there you go, guys. That's a, another way you can use a splitter if you don't have a USB 3.2. We can shut this down and install our graphics card. Shut it down. So lastly, we are going to install our graphics card. And also, the speaker is always good to have so you can listen for any errors when they first show. The speaker goes here, four pin. The speaker installed. We're going to install our button. So we'll pull this out. This is how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna route it through the back here, push it on through, which is what I normally always do. Okay. So.
this reset cable for the RGB. I push it on through here. I push it through the side, comes through the back, and then you plug it in. This plugs into here, like so. All cables in. Now for our graphics card, and we are pretty much done. RTX 3060 Ti. So it comes wrapped, open it like so, and then the card releases. Then bring it out, of course, and that is it right here. Look at this card, it is absolutely gorgeous. Although it is an ITX case, it is able to fit a decent graphics card. And that's why I chose this case for this ITX build because look at the space you get. It's absolutely fantastic. And we have one 8 pin here. Push it on through here. Okay, perfect. And push it down. Perfect. Give ourselves enough slack so that we can plug this in. There we go. There we have it. Our build is complete. Put everything else back on and uh, we're pretty much done. So we've got two here. Now for our button, we'll loosen the fans, push it hard up against it, so it holds it in place. That's what we wanted. We'll install our antennas now. As I stated earlier in the video, if you want to see the video of how I installed this little M2 Wi-Fi card, be sure to check out the video in the top right hand corner and uh, it will take you to that one minute video short of how I did it. Now this was basically like a little graphics card stand. We don't need it at all because our graphics card basically sits all the way at the bottom. So that's all right. We will put our covers back on. Perfect. Okay. Now, for our front panel, dust filter just pushes back in, match up all the holes, and then just push. So it slides in from the top first, so you push it down, and then you just push on in, like that. This build came out really, really well. Cable splitter for our final test. Look at that. Our entire build complete. We hold onto the button, it sinks to the motherboard. Look at that. It's reading now to Windows 11. And uh, we'll watch our temperatures. Okay, let's install our glass panel back. We want to test it with everything put together. All right, now to test some games quickly. Let's see how it goes.
generators. to that console. I'll activate the lift. Before you hate, I totally suck at this game. Cover your tracks. There's an enemy team hunting for you. Oh, we got an enemy. Go get your revenge. Squad.
squad member is redeploying. Enemy UAV active. You've got gas moving in.
We've got to deal with these guys. Attention passengers, this is your new captain speaking. Our updated flight plan has us landed in Stillwater. I'd like to remind all passengers to remain seated and enjoy the flight. Great. Who gave God a mic? It's easy to open! Oh, I can see some of our passengers are getting restless. Here's some relaxing music for your enjoyment. I am the greatest! <laughs>
going to another realm? Are you coming with? Now push it back into place. Now realign the wheel onto the track. Perfect. Now push the bridge along the track. What? The whole entire bridge is turning. How is the whole entire bridge turning? Boy. You're really strong. Just keep pushing until the bridge reaches its first position. Tired yet? No. He's always been really strong. So about the dead. You heard someone call them Hellwalkers. All the races helped with its construction. It was the last great act of cooperation between the realms before peace disappeared for good. Once you claim the light of all time, infuse the bowstring with its power. Don't forget. What now? Give it a moment. The temple needs time to wake up from its long slumber. It is from this room, and this room alone, that you will be able to cross between realms. What you see before you represents the temple in which we stand, as well as the realm towers that encircle the Lake of Nine outside. All the realms exist in the same physical space, reflections of each other. These doors, the towers outside, and the Nine Realms are all in... light of all time. This place can focus and control that light. And is this the world tree? Only an artistic representation of it. No, the Yggdrasil is much, much more than this. The tree of life is beautiful, just as we are bound to it. The tree nourishes our souls. The dew from its leaves feeds our valleys and rivers. The tree's very existence supports all the creation of all its gods. Its life energy interwoven into the top of life. Birth, growth, death, and rebirth. Every strand transcending time, transcending space. Everything is back to the tree. So, that's how it works. But I'm guessing you were looking for a more practical answer. Instead, turn the wheel to our actual destination, Alfheim. Wait, is this moving the big bridge outside? Yes, the wheel turns the bridge, and the bridge aligns to the different realm towers on the lake outside. Wait, there's no tower. And that's why realm travel to Jotunheim is impossible. Without a tower for the bridge to lock into, the sequence can't begin. No. No, no, no. Damn it, not yet. What's happening? <sighs> to restore the Bifrost magic, you must step into the light. But be very careful not to get your back.
attacking us for it. We didn't do anything. More will come. Where's this stuff in? What'd you say? I said nothing. Really? Okay. from those cages. Wonder why they're locked up. Be ready. What? Enemies ahead! A 
Atreus, follow me. Just like the street lights lit this town. Don't be afraid to leave this out.